guys welcome back in today's video I'm getting this mower ready for a test drive and taking it out for a rip so uh, this is a huge moment in time appreciate everyone for being patient with me but uh, here it finally is and uh, I do got to thank the sponsor of today's video Simply Safe uh, more about them later in the video so the Rurge box goes somewhere right here and it's insanely close to this clutch so I'm gonna be relocating it a little bit back and just try to make things a lot simpler. So yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so here's what I've got going so far. Uh, so I'm gonna throw some bracing here and then here. Uh, add in a tensioner for these pillow blocks just to minimize flex because there is actually a little bit of flex. So for the initial test drive, we'll just keep it rear wheel drive, uh, but we'll just be able to put a U-joint right there and straight to the front differential. All right guys, so now I'm gonna head to Fisher Steel and grab some steel, I'm running a little bit short. And uh, we'll also see what the guys think about my mower. The mower? It's got to be a functional mower. Yeah, you got to be able to cut grass with it, man. How, how, what about that deck? Now you got to go drive it over there, drop your deck off, go four wheeling, come back, pick your deck up, go cut the grass. Now that, that would be a nice mower. I'd buy her. What if it uh, flips over on you with the, with the deck? <laughs> That's the chance we're willing to take. You more gotta have that, like that more functionality viewers. where, like the table saw, that when you stick your finger in there, it stops. <laughs> you gotta put some kind of thing in there. If it sees Vaseline, it'll stop automatically, just like a shear bolt. Or put the put the seat switch in there. The ground snaps and stops the blade. That's probably gonna be an episode fifty. In that case, <laughs> it's no accident. But uh, I worry about getting it driving first. That belt drive system, it kind of sticks out past the frame and that that'd make it pretty hard. Buy some metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to be putting a deck on something that's this powerful. Not a very safe thing to do, but I'll tell you what is safe and that is Simply Safe. Now, Simply Safe is a convenient home security system that monitors your house 24 7 it's really easy to install and it's ordered online off the phone it comes straight to your doorstep and takes less than an hour to install and once you install it keeps your home professionally monitored 24 7 and if anything happens they'll be sure to alert the police um, they got sensors to cover every room and their extras like water sensors and HD cameras that also come in very handy now simply say it gets you protected for only 50 cents a day with no contracts so I'm going to be showing you how easy it is to install a system I'm gonna be installing it right in my garage. So yeah, let's get to it. So we got the glass break sensor. We got the HD camera that just plugs in. There goes our door sensor. Now let's go ahead and check out this arming station. So here it's asking me to enter my master pin. All right, we are now connected and armed. So the system should now alert us if anything happens. Now guys, don't be sleeping on this. Go ahead and head over to simplysafe.com slash facility builds to check out this award winning home security system. It's reliable and easy to use as you've seen. So thank you to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video and helping me stay protected. But let's go ahead and get right back to the action. So a few people were telling me that uh, if you don't support the shafts, they're just going to bend. I am mounting these shafts on pillow block bearings. I think that's a bit overkill, but uh, this box is going to be totally stiff, but this box will still be a fully adjustable up and down for a chain tension.
Now in order for my wheel not to hit these brakes right here, I need to install some wheel spacers. These are 1.5 inches. So it'll also help widen the stance. And uh, what we got here is extended wheel studs. Yeah, that slides on like that. Wow guys, would you check that out? We got the wheel spaced out, we got the brake calipers bolted on. So now what's left is we gotta go ahead and plumb all the brakes, hook up the radiator, plumb the rear brakes. This reverse box is done, we just gotta put the master links on it. And then we gotta go ahead and put the exhausts on, the carbs, do the electrical, and then fingers crossed, this thing will be ready to rip. Well, the past few days have been pretty hectic and a lot of this stuff is just really tedious and boring to film. But uh, as you can see, I decided to go away from the master cylinder and the footwell. And I put both of the master cylinders up here on the steering wheel. Yeah, it's not the prettiest, but it should work. I also had to cut into this throttle block to get the snowmobile cable to work. It's pretty tricky, but I got it working. Before I hook up all the chains, I need to make sure this engine runs and check the spark. Oh! go ahead and wrap things up here and take this thing to the property for a proper rip so we'll see if our hard work pays off I think it's gonna pay off and thank you for being patient guys this took a pretty long time I'll do some things on camera and then I'll catch you at the property
right, Aiden, yank me up. All right. Need to go back and weld things up. Uh. Dang. All right, guys, day two, reinforce the lower section. So we're going to have to see how this goes. guys this thing is crazy uh, the front is all right but the rear is sitting too low and it's also too soft down there that's what she said I don't know if I want to be taking those turns yet we're gonna have to fine-tune this thing but uh, yeah I'd say that's a success now, did this thing meet my expectations uh, sort of I wasn't sure how well this thing would handle it seems to handle pretty good so now we can go ahead and uh, mess with the gearing the tires the suspension and really make it a ripper. Woo! Guys, the heat index is like 90 degrees and I forgot earplugs, so I'm kind of going deaf right now. But... So Caleb, the guy who donated this engine to me, he set the clutching to be really aggressive. So the stall or the engagement is at 5,000 RPMs. All right, guys, and also I want to mention that the gearing on this thing is really low. And I did it like that because I didn't want to get hurt on the first test drive. In case it runs away, I don't go like 100 miles an hour. So... It'll probably only see about 60 miles today, but once we get more comfortable uh, stiffen up those shocks because the suspension is pretty soft, we could see uh, pretty fast speeds.